us in or <laughs> real quick so what's up miles well, are we gonna do a break period? all right oh, all right hey 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 my fellow hemp nuts are you guys ready for the cannabis bonanza yeah Woo! we have a fun show today we're going to be discussing new information on cannabis and sexual function this new study came out yes we are. Um, it's about the female perspective we're also going to test it's about your... damn time sorry we're also going to test your knowledge about <laughs> recent cannabis news and events so we're gonna we'll, we'll, we'll talk about today's word some research nice i have a new segment that i created out of frustration for some of the false advertisements out there it's a new segment i called no THC does that. Um, <laughs> it's a response to all these claims like about that. CBD. I like that. And um, one of the things I'd like to talk about at the end is this USDA held a listening session about hemp and had people comment about recommendations for how we should grow and regulate hemp. But first, mm. I'd like to catch up with you guys. I feel yes. like it's been a minute. Yeah, I know. She, yes. she was out of town. You well, were overseas. He got, he got sick. Yeah, I know. You got a little Who sick. Who got sick? You all right? Oh, yeah. I, I'm better now. I'm better now. <laughs> right. Just, yeah. yeah. He, he, thought, he, he was blaming it on me because yeah. I had been sick. And the, but you got sick. Well, I thought I, I was like, I accused your vape pen of having boogers in it because oh. after, <laughs> after I used it, I was like, that was all that was coming oh, out of me. As he in inhales. <laughs> <laughs> that was Greer's boogers then. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, well, it's a nasal bend. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so how are you feeling? Yeah, how are you feeling? Oh, oh, I'm, I'm, I had to cancel some uh, speaking <laughs> engagements at a Canada East compliance yeah. and some other conferences, but I'm feeling like a, better. He was um, a featured speaker. And yeah. You had to cancel. So, but but I'm, I'm back. You know, I have my voice back, nice. not coughing as much. I'm going to be doing a talk for the American Chemical Society okay. uh, on uh, April 1st. I'm going to be actually, I was invited to speak at the Association of Black Journalists on April 6th in Philly. They're doing a nice. cannabis forum. Hmm. Oh, really? They're having people come and talk about it. So I'm pretty excited about oh, that. I might have to uh, take a trip down. Yeah, it's yeah. like on a Saturday. Ask I think it'd be questions. pretty fun. You can listen to Dr. J. Yeah, in Jan. In Nick. Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah, in Philly. Perfect. In Dr. Philly. Second yeah, coming to Dr. J. <laughs> <laughs> Finger roll. Yeah. <laughs> Finger roll. This one gets down. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> and uh, I know Jan speaking. I think March twenty seventh or twenty eighth online at this very large hey. um, online yeah. free cannabis education event. I know. So. No, I'm talking about cannabis. I'm talking about how it impacts mental health, all that fun kind of stuff, and some really, really interesting ideas I have around cannabis and mental health treatment. Sweet. And and uh, we're reminded now by our pilot to put your seats up and your tray tables down and put your phones in airplane mode. <laughs> Make sure our phones are in airplane mode, people. This isn't a 737, is it? No. <laughs> okay. We're good. We good. I don't know. As long as, yeah, as long as that damn Dude. plane. I know. Sure. Anyway, we yeah. totally got off track again. But That's what we do. <laughs> That's what THC do. <laughs> So THC do that. <laughs> Maybe we need CBD then to keep us alert. Uh, mm. Such a nerd speak. A bit of both. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, I actually did a, a phone interview today uh, with Prevention Magazine. Yeah, they're CBD. doing an entire issue devoted yeah. to CBD. Yeah, um, I hear that. I hear that. I as hear well. the buzz yeah. too. Who's... I'm on airplane mode. Me too. Is that I'm... someone's phone? I don't know. Uh oh. It's, it, We're no. failing. I'm turning my phone off. This is not a good way to start. No, it's not. But give us a second. Please. Is someone in the someone listening to this? Is your phone on right now? <laughs> or, is some... <laughs> or is there an issue with uh, are people tapping us? Yeah, I mean, is this the CIA? Greer the CIA. asked about the CIA. Yeah, yeah the so CYA. I don't right. want us talking about this. Are we good? See that? All right, all we're right. good. Okay. It was all Randy's fault. Was that me? <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking with you. I don't know. All right. So anyway, we talked about Jay Hun's help. What Dr. else is Jay. going on? And you're speaking in Philadelphia, right? That's what uh, April sixth. Yeah. Yep. And All what right. about and you, what, uh, what am I doing? Yeah. Um, nothing. Oh, that's <laughs> freaking bullshit. Nah, I'm in um, I'm in uh, development talks with uh, Comedy Central right now. Fantastic. Oh, that's yeah. really Exciting. awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So, awesome. Anything you can tell us? Because um, you've been vague. Yeah, I like yeah, to you keep don't it talk. vague. Is it comedy? Teach me how to be that way. It is funny. Can you please teach me how to be that way? No, Jan, because you wouldn't be you. I know, because it's out there. <laughs> it, is. it is so out there. And all we like the you way. being you. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we like Doc Jan being Doc Jan. Yeah. Oh, my God. So my son met Greer this week. Oh, weekend. yes. Awesome kid. He loved <laughs> you. And these kids were so funny. I'm, well, God damn, I'm 
talking about it. But we, we <laughs> smoked a lot of weed on the yeah. way to the show. And they're sitting there. And, you know, I'm supposed to be like this really boring older woman and by the end of the night they're like you're the best person ever jan you're the best person ever can we meet cool, greer Mom. can we meet greer they loved greer and grayson Ooh. loved that you knew who he was of course from those pictures yes. <laughs> greer, when we were growing up greer had the cool step pop did he yeah he yeah. had the step pop everybody wanted to yeah. hang at oh. his house so <laughs> big up to victor khan yeah, yeah. my guy hey. my guy and he had a great jump shot oh so, my so are you doing any shows this week um yeah i'll be at the comedy cellar okay yeah. well, he acts like that's not a big deal. Uh, no, no, I'm, just, I'm just performing every week in manhattan <laughs> <laughs> and one of the top <laughs> wait hold on i did another don't laugh you at did me. a what i did another jan typical thing I saw you on Crashing again oh, on the last episode, <laughs> and I took a picture, and I sent it to Jayhan. I'm like, this is our co-host. Don't you love it? <laughs> You're very uh, good. You're a yeah. great actor. Well, that's what I want to be. You know, stand up. Well, you are hard. that. You yeah. Know? Well, that's what I but, do. Yeah. yeah it is. We're going to the some kind of thing that we don't know if it's like we read that it might be a cult. And I read Mom, uh, Rami Wait. Malik. I'm sorry. Oh, gosh. I didn't mean to cut you off. That's I met right. him this uh, the Oscar Award winner. No uh, way. Yeah, I met him. Yeah. When? Yeah, uh, Thursday night. Yeah, he was awesome. Wait, yeah. wait, hold on. He was That's at the show. not. Dude, yeah, he was at I the was show. fucking at that show. Uh, I was at. Yeah. God, yeah, was that's there. right. You were, I duh. was. Oh ah, my god. Ah, no more THC for Greer. <laughs> well, you seem to remember the important stuff. <laughs> exactly. They say that uh, forgetting things takes more energy than remembering. So. At least he doesn't say Tony Award winner. Yeah, he got the award. Oh, oh, that's cool. I bet you he won a Grammy. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you meet some really cool people. Yeah, yeah I do once in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like oh, me yeah. and Jay Han. That's right. <laughs> and Randy. Randy, I grew up with Randy. Randy's the man. I'm not yeah. cool. Hilarious. Oh, sure. <laughs> I'm smart. You yeah. are smart. So what's smart up is with cool, you then? Yeah. What huh? is up with you? Uh, not much. I actually, uh, <laughs> we've made some progress to get on the 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 Brooklyn Sprout Greer and Oz company, uh, Brooklyn Sprout Social Enterprise. So. Uh, we got a installation date of June for our greenhouse at at mm. at oh, the God. hospital. Oh my so, God! So yeah, yeah, we had looking it was, forward to that. Yeah, oh my it's God. been about uh, eight months. What well, which in, hospital? Uh, Interfaith Medical Center, fifteen forty five oh. Atlantic Avenue. So you'll see our oh, greenhouse right from the street. Yeah. So that was big. Oh, that's um, Congratulations. Thanks. That's got to be like kind of first up. It's kind of the country, a, a private cultivation facility yep. at a hospital. At a hospital. I mean, uh, when's the New York Times article coming out? I Tell mean, me about it. <laughs> I, mean, I, I wrote half of it six months ago. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like big news. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is wonderful. Yeah, right. Excited. So I'm... it's, it's, uh, and it was a good experience because we had to work through the Department of Buildings and Installations. A greenhouse mm -hmm. is something that's new in New York City. Mm -hmm. So um, having this right. go down and constructing it, oh, um, we'll, you know, trailblaze for the next you know, cats that want to come through. And, did they count as outdoor cultivation, the greenhouse? Mm -hmm. It didn't count as an indoor type facility. Exactly. So what we're doing is this will be our outdoor facility. Uh, We'll have an annex at Boys and Girls High School, mm -hmm. which is a half vocational based high school. So they teach vocation. So you can go there as a student, become an electrician, become a uh, culinary right, arts person. Right. So they'll adopt our hydroponic program. Um, we'll have actually student workers running our farm. I think that's going to be more popular than any field trip that Wait, school's going to have. Wait, I I just want to clarify something. Break it down. So what are you growing at this hydroponic farm? <laughs> Vegetables. Veggies. <laughs> We're growing poppies. <laughs> Watch out for them parents. Oh, my yeah. God. Those parents. <laughs> Did you hear about the addicted parents? Yeah. The what? So there's addicted these poppy what? fields oh, in India that are being terrorized oh. by parents that are addicted <laughs> to the drug. And so. Don't really? out yeah. parrots. Yeah. What? Yeah. You, you missed this. Polly wants a crack. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my solution was to put out bowls of Kool-Aid flavored Narcan out and well, kind of get the parrots a little. The farmers come home, right. their whole house is emptied. <laughs> parrots are flying around with clothing, with laptops. Yeah, yeah. And this this is a unique problem, I think, to opioids because you don't hear about this happening with any other medicinal plants. Like no. you know, it's 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 really 
I mean, I mean birds go after the seeds it. in the hemp it. plants, yeah. not the actual yeah. flower. Right. So, yeah. that's right. so what yeah. they're not, what are they, so are they not getting high from the seeds? What's No, they're yeah. just, they want to eat them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. All right. But they're addicted. <laughs> <laughs> it's like All right. popcorn. Yeah. Right. Anywho. Well, today I, I found a word Wait, of the day. Hold on. Oh, no. I'm going to highlight the fact that you're operating under patriarchal system right now where you totally forgot to ask me about how I am. Well, you're oh. the therapist. You ask everybody. <laughs> Did y'all hear that? Sorry. I felt Sorry. a little so, salty, yeah. guys. I, so, you know, women so, slip. Are, <laughs> so how are you feeling today? <laughs> yeah. Tell us. A, a few or? moments ago, I was feeling salty. No, I'm good, actually. I feel like um, it's really exciting kind of what's going on in this field and seeing how all of us are kind of evolving and yep. some of the projects going on. We're excited to be working with a company down in South America that uh -oh. we got a good contract with. Mm. And, and we're, we have some other things in the fire. And having very interesting conversations with very interesting people who are very So without giving too us. much detail, can you just I give us a, a hint of, uh, I get an NDA? at least the, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, dig it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You get That's it. That's why I get you a hint of it. No, we're just here to change the way that yep. people think about cannabis yep. and in a meaningful way, in a, in a health related way. And there are some really great projects that we have on the horizon. We're going to do something that we think we can do uh, in a few months that's going to really be eye-opening for New York. So we're uh -huh. excited. We're excited. we got a lot awesome. of fun stuff coming up. Cool. So I love IRCCMH. So if you want to learn more about us, go to our website. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> IRCCMH.org. <laughs> yes. All right. So let's get into it. All right. So uh, this uh, word of the day is like an, like an idiom, you know, or, or colloquialism we hear a lot. And much like lots of our word of the days, it's a very old practice, but I actually couldn't find the exact origin of this. But the word based on listener feedback uh, that we're going to talk about is hot box or hot boxing. Um, <laughs> so, so for the uninitiated, okay. right? For the uninitiated, right? I know the hot box. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Hot so box. smoking Ooh. cannabis in a small enclosed space has immersed oneself in the smoke. Mm -hmm. It's also, it turns out, called fish bowling in some places and clam baking. Just, can someone use it in a sentence? Just clam baking. <laughs> so, uh, the girl box so hot. <laughs> <laughs> Feel like a clam bake. I don't know what do you do. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> a clam All bake. Right. What? Yeah. What is a clam bake? That's like, uh, that's probably from like the 50s, <laughs> 60s. Yeah, I never heard of that. <laughs> yeah. So hot you said this sentence. Sure. Like, sure. Yeah. And and even hot boxing, I've I've fainted in a hot yeah, boxing. I've fainted in I passed out. So fainted, maybe the biggest hot, hot boxing. box I've ever been was at a Damian Marley concert. Did you pass out? Uh, people all around. I saw about four people pass out next. Yeah, week. yeah, that's too much. Yeah, that's, that's too yeah. much. For but it nerds, was a fun night. Yeah. for nerds and health professionals, it's also called passive inhalation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's there's actually it's a, a gentle way of putting it. There was a study done at Johns Hopkins by a friend of mine, Ryan Vandry. They actually. In the lab, they built like this hermetically sealed chamber and had people smoke and people not smoke next to them to see if they would pop positive for a drug test. And it worked. Like the people actually had detectable THC. Well, they're really inhaling positive. it. Yeah. I mean, you know, they're inhaling yeah. it. Like, yeah. So, but uh, it detectable? turns out that like this uh, term is used a lot. It's used in gardening, right? A closed box with glass or plaques. Yep. That's a hot box. Yep. Um, it's also an overheated, like, I don't know, it's they call it a journal box on a railroad car. Um, there's apparently um, in baseball, there's a hot box, I guess. Um, so it's like this term that you see everywhere that's been adopted. But what was interesting to me is that there's actually ancient information about hot boxing. You guys have heard of like those tents where people like put oh, sure. plants on the fire and you sure. sit a sweat lodge type <laughs> sure. thing. So apparently since like Greek and Roman times, the, the, the ancient writer Herodotus wrote about this, about these group of people uh, the Scythians or Scythians, you know, they, they know the Grim Reaper's tool. Mm -hmm. There's apparently the that I was, mean, the yeah, 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 that was used a lot for hemp cultivation. They used to throw those flowers on the fire and sit in the tent. Sure. So that's like the regional hot, hot box. box. Sure. <laughs> but but I found out something really weird about the practice of hot boxing and stuff like that was this is a little trippy, but the Oracle of Delphi from like ancient Greek people used to go and get yep. their future read. Yeah. So she used to sit in these vapors 
and like inhale all these vapors and then read people's like mystic futures and tell them what to do with their kingdoms. And it turns out that she wasn't <laughs> huffing cannabis, but ether and other stuff that was coming naturally out of the rocks. So she was <laughs> so wait a like minute. sniffing she glue. She was actually really huffing glue. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And like, oh, if you invade a kingdom, one will fall. Ah. And like all these crazy predictions, but people came from all over to see it. So this is. You well, know, yeah, the Native American practice yeah. where, you know, people yeah. would... I think uh, every culture probably has yeah. something similar to that. Yeah. And incorporate peyotes and, yeah. and kind of yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. go places in their mind. Well, it's a spiritual journey. It is. Actually, believe it or not, my therapist, I love her. She, she says, so what does the medicinal herb tell you? And it's really kind of interesting because hmm. as you start to kind of listen to what it tells you, and this sounds a little woo-woo, but it's actually fascinating because I had a very spiritual experience. Did she this. ask that from me experiencing no, we were... it or is she asking yeah, you yeah, 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 from yeah. just, no, she, I, she doesn't know. She experienced it herself. So she yeah. has her oh, own she answer. Totally, yeah. All right. And, and everyone has their own answer. And yep. so it was really kind of an interesting thing because I always think about cannabis in terms of mood regulation yep. instead of really answering some questions for yourself. And so that was like, I had a very big spiritual experience last week in Colorado after that. And it was a really eye-opening experience to me about something. And um, it was kind of cool. It was kind of transformative. Mm. Is so what I you, said. <laughs> you, what were you hot boxing? I mean, <laughs> yeah. How does this how apply? How much did you smoke? Sorry. So, <laughs> but, like, how it much? wasn't that much, guys. It wasn't No, that but much, what it is, is when the student me... is ready, the teacher, teacher will, will appear. appear. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, you're at the really, right spot. And, and I'm not saying it was like some kind of like angels coming down. It wasn't who, no. who was yeah. genetic. It was just kind of like some clarity about a lot of it's stuff. And it's really wisdom. And realizing. And that's what she calls it, plant wisdom. You know, what is the plant wisdom? What does the plant tell you? So I just got off. No, that's brilliant. And I think I just got off the phone with one of our our younger brothers and he's weaning himself off of integrating tobacco with oh, yeah. with with, with who, Gaiva? yeah mm. you know which it, it takes a while to do that and right. and he was he was expressing no. the fact that he was accustomed to the buzz that you get from, from the, the tobacco, tobacco. yeah, yeah. And, i didn't and like that buzz. yeah it dulled, and after, it dulled you and after it, a while it yeah. made you lethargic exactly yeah so um <laughs> We've mm. gone off so topic. That's fine. Yeah, well, I'd like to go God. back, <laughs> go back a, a second, way back <laughs> machine to when you guys Anybody talked about people are? passing out from hot boxing. Hot boxing. <laughs> yes. And I think this requires a little bit of clarification because that's not due to the THC or something on the no, plant. No, it's due to a lack of oxygen, that right. that lightheaded that. feeling. I just yeah. like to clarify that. And, and yeah, why do? Yeah, because we can I mean, just see this turning into. Right. We admit that that it causes. No, all no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, people it, faint at concerts. That's what, what yeah. that's about. I mean, yeah. so let, you know, we were yeah. just being funny. Hot well, boxing yeah. is somewhat <laughs> but, dangerous. But we have to be why, careful with our words. But the question days. is: is why do people hot box? What, what because is, they want to get higher quicker. Yeah. Because they don't have a great amount of herb, and is that it? Uh, or they're hiding from their parents you know, in the car. Of, <laughs> but why would you smoke yourself out like a ham? Like just like in a day, you try to hide it. You can be totally like <laughs> smoke yourself like, like a ham. ham. <laughs> just yeah, that like a damn Smithshire. <laughs> That's what we used to do. Honey in the Honda, though. I mean, it's oh, yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. But we weren't Honda. doing it deliberately. We were just like, you know, we stumbled down across the this side. ancient practice. Yeah, <laughs> it'd probably be freezing outside. Right. And, no, and we were just, just, just trying to hide it. But yeah, <laughs> but the car would just fill up. Yeah, you know? yeah. But to Randy's point, when you don't have a lot, because smoking is incredibly wasteful. You're burning yes. it. Yep. Yes. You you ex you exhale a lot of it, mm -hmm. and so. That is another point. Is is it's a conservative practice. <laughs> Roll the windows up, fool. That's why vaporizing with the volcano is uh, is great. Oh my god! Did I show you my new toy? Uh -oh. Okay. <laughs> she brings up. Like Devin, are we talking? I walked right into that. Janice, are we? Janice, who is J Mom. No. <laughs> Sorry. Log off. No. Log no. off. No. It's no. Me. Are we talking no. about the research yes. study now? I thought yes. I sent you a picture of it. You, it was yes. <laughs> not you it it made it. by the makers of Volcano. That's oh, really? why I, I brought that up. I it's a freaking vaporizer. And my boy, Jeff Hands Lee's a great time. comedian. He just sent me a... Uh, uh, and it's awesome. A dab machine. Really? Yeah, a friend of mine, Jeff Leach. Oh, man. 22. This was so funny. <clears throat> I, oh, my God. Yeah. But anyway, it's really amazing. It doesn't make any smell. And when you inhale it, you don't even really, you just feel like you're breathing. 
It's phenomenal. Well, I mean, you also taste the flavor of the, of yeah. the flower. Yeah, 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 well. yeah, 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 yeah. And they have, anyway, yeah. sorry. We've totally gone see, off. No, I, I really, missed you guys. I can't even really tell, though, if you can't smell it or not. Because when you inhale it, you taste it. And when you exhale it, you know, it and if you in, it's coming through your nose and your so I don't even know if that person can smell it or not. Right. Like, I don't. I, I, well, we, it doesn't smell like anything. The residual sm yes. smell is definitely not. That of okay. smoke. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, not like smoke. Right. Sometimes uh, the the vapor but, from a volcano reminds me of the smell of like burnt popcorn or something. Yeah. Like a, well, that's yeah. because you like it's that. actually burning. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. yeah it's too well, high. Then it's too high. Yeah. Exactly. The temperature is setting it too, yeah. Yeah. A little too high. This one um, even has like a friggin' app on my phone, so you can adjust the temperature. <laughs> yeah, I, that's <laughs> the Pax, right? Yeah. yeah. No. What no, the volcano got one. My new toy. Okay, because Pax has one where I have an app where I can adjust the thing on my. But that's an oil though, and I could turn it off. Yeah. I'm anyway, I think sorry. I'm gonna do that too much anymore. Go. All right. right. <laughs> Hot boxing. Hot boxing. Well, I, I think we, we pretty much covered that <laughs> subject, yeah, yeah, yeah. but People that's the word like, of the next show. So it's we been need the hot boxing here. So, so in summary, <laughs> well, the term hot box, it clam actually bake. It feels like a fucking hot box right now. I'm like yeah, sweating. Little, you know, um, I'm I would say it really doesn't because I can see across the table. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I'm uh, being so hot, Jay Han. Uh, sweating. Yes. Sorry. But uh, so the term's been used for decades. The practice is centuries old. I think that's the take home. But you know, these terms may change. Who knows what it'll be called in the future? Right. You know, vape boxing or something probably healthier. Right. Um, but you know, vape share. Vape share. Yeah. There we <laughs> there go. Vape share. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. It is. Um, but that's what happens to a lot of these terms. They, their meaning changes over time. Their practices change over time. And there's no shortage of resources if you're want to know more about hot boxing the do's and don'ts there's yeah. lots of guides out there now on, on the internet but there's some fun research uh and we're, we're going to talk about sex 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 and cannabis i'm sorry i'm like yeah. the only one so, clapping so don't get nervous don't sex. get nervous no but, no get so, nervous so last <laughs> week an article published in sexual medicine caught my eye uh, the study was conducted by researchers at st louis school of medicine <laughs> with their colleges of health sexual and social medicine. justice I never heard of that magazine. maternal uh, fetal care it's a great magazine really good pictures um of st mary's department of obstetrics gynecology women's health so the article is entitled the relationship between marijuana use prior to sex and sexual function women and before jan tells us what the researchers found i wanted to sell a couple things about uh, their findings. So um, this is something that's been studied since about the 70s, but very few studies looking at how does cannabis impact sexual relationships and right. sex in general. But basically, they had a lot of self-reported stuff um, looking at people, men and women. And basically, research has found that marijuana users report an increase in sexual enjoyment and orgasm intensity, as well as an increase or no change um, in desire. And that's sort of doing the general thing. And THC, CBD, and these other endocannabinoids interact with hormones and neurotransmitters that affect sexual behavior. Wait, hold on. Do you guys understand what he's saying? I, yeah. He can be kind of yeah, dirty. I think, Sorry. Yeah. I just want to make so, sure. So dopamine, that's something that we all know and love. Right. Right. That is actually a key kind of pro-sexual modulator, um, especially in apparent, according to research, uh, you know, for female sexual function. This was part of the reason they wanted to study this is cannabis can increase dopamine it turns out it could be good for healthy sexual activity. And so activation of the receptors that like THC stimulate the cannabinoid receptors shown to enhance dopamine, which could be, again, one pathway that cannabis affects. And dopamine is like euph euphoria, natural euphoria. Yeah, uh, yeah. They release, say there's only uh, two things in life we really love, and that's serotonin and dopamine. Right. Okay. Um, but a lot of the research in sex and sexual behavior has been done in rats, which I have to say is slightly more interesting than watching think, flies reproduce. And we, we but, posted a funny picture yeah. cartoon of that. Of rat, you know, of like, the well, rat. it was an image in yeah. a journal article about two rats having sex. Yeah, so and I tried really to, actually tried to post it on Reddit as a meme, and they're like, this is an infographic. You're on the wrong <laughs> thread. <And> I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I don't know. I think it crosses both boundaries. Um, <laughs> But, uh, but, you know, I think it's, it's uh, also important that, um, you know, there is some limited human research that suggests that cannabinoids can cause um, increases in sort of self-reporting of desire but, and improvement in the quality the, of, of sex. But this mm -hmm. is a huge issue because we know that so many people are taking 
antidepressants. And the biggest issue of why they get off of antidepressants is because of sexual side effects, making people anorgasmic, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So I have to tell you, I like this article for two reasons is again, we know anecdotal, well, probably more than two reasons. One, we know anecdotally people report higher sexual um, satisfaction with sex, but we right. haven't really been studying that. People don't right. want to always stick to the physical conditions rather than, these are huge, important issues so, here. Time. Mm. Second is that it's about women. Sorry. Yep. Three it's about damn time women. that we talk about women's yep. orgasms. And so there's that. But then we have such an implication if we can really understand what's going on and how cannabis can make a difference in people's lives. Because we talk about it. I know in my clinics, um, I own a large clinical practice in uh, the Mid-Atlantic. And we have like seven sex therapists there. And erectile dysfunction is a huge issue. Uh, vaginismus is a huge issue. There are all these sexual related conditions that actually might be improved through cannabis use. Um, and that's something that no one's really looking at. So this makes me so excited to have this conversation. One of the things I looked at was dyspareunia. Yeah. What is that? It, it's painful sex. Like, oh. like regret? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this drunk motherfucker passed out next to me. Why did I do that? <laughs> but, but Regret. But no, but what, what, we live so, with no regrets. Clinically speaking, what is that? It's, just... it, it's really, it's painful sex. So it could be anything from <clears throat> as women get older, for example, their vaginal walls, then uh, that's normal, natural kind of thing. That's a reaction to hormones. And they can have uncomfortable sex. It could be painful. It can cause bleeding in the vagina. It can cause a whole hell of a lot of things. There's also vaginismus, which is a little bit different. But if someone's had uh, some kind of trauma in their lives that the vagina actually closes up and makes penetration impossible. And dyspareunia, what it does is also for people who've had trauma, oftentimes that they have negative kind of mental associations with sex and they actually might have a physical painful reaction as well. Mm. So the mind and the body wow. is really connected in this. And that's a really huge issue. And one of the things I loved about this article is it talked about how women actually, most people find, and this is across males and females, that two thirds of people tend to say that their sex improves after they smoke or after they ingest. And, and of course, we talked about this a, several, like a month ago, about mm. how it depends on how much you use. If you mm. use too little, it doesn't make a difference. If you use too much, it kind of negatively it impacts yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you have to find the right amount. But to, you know, so many people are saying this actually is really good for me. It's made it better, more enjoyable. And they found that they actually reported increases in orgasms. Well, let me ask you this. Just oh, yes. I am the So the I don't child. have kids, but right. I'm picturing me being a parent of teens. And looking back when I was a teen, I know I but we got it. It's. Yeah. So yeah. these teens that have a lot more access. Yeah. And information right now. Yeah. And um, once the, the toothpaste is out of the tube. You can't get it back in. I don't know. So how? what's so that me, conversation okay, so that you me, make? But let me say this, though, mm -hmm. because I think you're for... I, I love that you have this perspective. This is not the female perspective, what you're saying. Right. Because when you're young and you're sexually active, you right. don't know your body that right. well. You aren't that comfortable in your body. Right. I can tell you, I can have orgasms immediately. It took me a couple of years. To, and that's very common in young adolescent women right. is that they really kind of don't know what sexual satisfaction is for them. Right. And that's something like when I, I used to actually teach human sexuality and, and taught about female masturbation because no one ever talks about that. And we need to destigmatize that as well, because you know, that's a normal part of sexual exploration is knowing your body and what works and what doesn't work. But I think so what I, I would know what I was asking I, is with the pop, I think when we were younger, there wasn't as much strength. Right. In oh, you're potency. talking about the potency? So now that there's more access, there's better, I guess yeah. there's, you know. The, I mean, can we actually say that, man, that it wasn't that potent? I, mean, I think that people I, actually, I think that people don't smoke as much as they used to because of potentially the potency. That it doesn't take as much I, as it used to. Well, know. that's why you might need to like right. that's far. Uh, <clears throat> that brings in that whole dosing and how much right. to take. So right. they didn't look at that in the study. Yeah, but that's maybe a good point. Right. two tokes, like two is nice, just you know, to activate you. <sighs> right. And right. like at that, because I mean, I've had when I first started. I yeah. The first time I took a pull, I was like, "Whoa, I probably shouldn't take anymore." And wait, wait, I did, and, and I it, I was 
it wasn't cool. I was right, fucked up. Right. You know? And that's not fun. And as I got older, <laughs> I realized, okay, boom, Mother a couple of hits, and now I can, you know, go yeah. play basketball still. <laughs> right. Or karate. Tennis or karate, all yeah. that. <laughs> but but I, I guess I was getting at something maybe a little bit different, which was that, you know, young pe young women don't know their bodies a lot. And so I think there's a lot of anxiety also that goes on with sex yeah. and that this could be an anxiolytic that means you know, Ease. anxiety reduction yeah. kind yeah. of way to kind of relax people so that they can also enjoy it more yeah. as well. But, you know, the, the, the big thing that the study found was really the highest issue was that orgasms improved yep. so, and so, increased. So real quickly, they looked at uh, five categories, right? Overall sexual experience, you know, the magnitude of positive impact. So it was sexual experience, sex drive, orgasms, uh, dyspareunia and lubrication. And they had four choices was, does it positively impact it a lot, a moderate amount, a little, or not at all? And really, you know, most of the categories, right, it was all kind of spread all over the place. But for sex drive and orgasms, it was either a lot or a moderate amount. So the two highest categories. So there was no one reported in this study that cannabis helped not at all with orgasms. There was that's zero amazing. respondents, which is kind of incredible if you think about it. No, you know, people are filling this out there and they're like, what is the magnitude of positive effect on cannabis in my sexual activity when it comes yeah. to orgasms? No one put a little. Everyone put a lot. Yep. Like, yep. Where's really? this study? I'm just yeah. my mind is so um, yeah. where's the study done? <laughs> and who and doing it? <laughs> so we so this was at a medical center. It's at, it was yeah. at a uh, where this medical center at? St. Louis. St. Uh, Louis. St. Louis. Mm. And their they get school a, a, of a medicine. random group of citizens okay. that volunteered for this. Question. 373 well, patients. participants. Patients. Well, yeah, I mean, it was they adjusted for yep. um, race as well. Women, they had a heterosexual, bisexual, and lesbian yep. people who were married, mm -hmm. single, so I'm living assuming with this a partner. Is, this, yeah. This is all women, right? Yeah, yeah this is focused on women. Mostly. Okay. <laughs> no, because I'm saying, yeah, like, I can't. Yeah. What, the, what the dude's doing there? Like, well, that's I, a great uh, question. But that's, but that's, that's a good like, question. Hold on, though. But this is a serious issue because it is. in research a lot, it's mostly on men. And rarely are women focused on in research. This is a true thing. Yeah, it's when either right? men or couples, and they yeah. really focused on. And, and so this yeah. is like groundbreaking on mm. a lot of levels because we are having conversations now and in research, including women, and that to me. So is this a study is did one of the, before this. They actually did one other study that was just on women, and I could see why they'd want to do the study just on women, but they had. They looked at the endocannabinoids, the the natural THC like compounds our body makes, and they found that. One goes up and one goes down when women are watching erotic films. This was an actual study they did. They had women yeah. come into the study. They said, yeah. does it affect the endocannabinoid system? Does it, that natural system, is it triggered? And it turns out that they had them watch like some fish documentary. <laughs> and then they're like, turn on the erotic film. And then they're like, wow, those endocannabinoids are changing. And so then they were like, well, we have to look at this some more. <laughs> oh, but, it, wow. but it shows you how the ECS is. Is the, affected by everything. our system adapts you know? and tells ECS, us. ECS was break that. What is that? Endocannabinoid oh, system. That's for all it. the people out there who don't know. Yeah. <laughs> ECS. No. What's ECS? Huh? She lost me again. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I could see why. You know, I was thinking about that study. I was like, yeah, I wouldn't want to just invite a bunch of dudes to watch erotic films in my lab. I just, yeah. Just like, oh. <laughs> Women come watch your phones you laugh. Are you yeah, freaking kidding me? <laughs> Are you might as well get locked up. I'd, li I'd like to see the review Go to board. Jail. Uh, yeah. Same. <laughs> yeah. <You know. laughs> no thanks. Oh, oh my god. But could you imagine pitching a study like these to like your review board at the medical school, being like, "You're doing what? <laughs> Just hear me out, okay? Just hear me out, please." Seven hundred and fifty guys. <laughs> All right. In one room. In one room. <laughs> they call it cockboxing. <laughs> We'll clean up afterwards. We swear we'll clean up everything. 250 men drowned in cockboxing. <laughs> and that's why right. we don't have that study. And, li and, and little Enrique has to come and clean up afterwards. And fucking people got new Oh my God. You did not just see it. Oh my God. Oh. God, Sorry I love about that. My job. Um, that's why they brought me in here for the funny. Oh, we brought you here for the brains. <laughs> the brains. Oh. <laughs>
But I, I we think, brought Randy here. The <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Just messing with you. There you go. <laughs> Randy got brains. Yeah. But we, 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 we talked about some important things that this study didn't address, and I'm that's sorry. what is the partner doing? Is there co use there, or is it just one person? Does, you know, if two people are using, does that negative? I like to imagine that she's like, screw your needs. I'm going for mine. <laughs> I could see that. Is, is that why? That, yeah. that would be, I would suggest that that would be wise. Mm -hmm. What, uh, I mean, that's one. Well, okay, okay, how many couples? Was this three? How many people? Three hundred seventy-three. Now, were they all coupled? No, no, that's no, a good that's question. Point. So, I, I think I, most of them were married. <laughs> some were living with a partner, and some were single. Okay, okay. So the single people, I'm assuming, were women, right? Yeah, that's all women. All women. Oh, okay, cool. Because like this, I mean, the whole man part is ridiculous. Because some men, like, I don't think men have. If a man has a problem. It's if, probably if, something let psychological. Me, let me say it in layman's terms for you. Men get horny when they smoke. Yeah. And yeah. women do too. And women do too. too this, no, exactly. It, it confirms. <laughs> I never thought there was an issue either way around. I didn't think there was a yeah. question. My my worry well, is, I don't it, get horny you know, when I smoke. What? Nah. You sure, don't? I'm not, I don't get horny when I smoke. I don't even get the mungies. <laughs> I say you smoke for so long like an old dreadlock Rastafarian. You had a smoke here and smoke. Uh, smoke ah, man, smoke. only the smoke. Right. <laughs> Tell the guy them to leave me alone. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah, we're all. This, we must have missed each other for the last two weeks. Dig it. We haven't seen each other in like, I know, I felt like it's like almost like a month. It seems like. I was like, oh my God, when's the last time I was on He's the like, show? I missed them. Anyway, so anyway, sorry, Jayhan, we got off topic. No, we didn't. You're Jay. like hurting court. You're hurting cats today. Yeah. <laughs> Can we all talk about sex, please? What's going on? <laughs> okay, well, I think no. we talked enough about sex. We, yeah. Can we talk well, enough about sex? I think so. We can come. We can circle back to it if, if yeah, we need we to. Yeah, we have to. But there's a new segment that I was inspired to create, and it's a oh, short okay. one, but um, it's called. Uh, I call it No THC Does That. So I'm not sure what you guys do with your weekends, but Sundays I like to go through all the cannabis newsletters I get and kind of like <laughs> read through what companies are saying. Mm -hmm. And I notice a lot of companies that work with C CBD often talk trash about THC and they ascribe really? all these things to what CBD does. I'm like, oh, wait, actually, THC does that. So I was it was inspired because one of our, our journalist friends, Angela Baca, who wrote for Big Bud Magazine, wrote this article called Everything You Wanted to Know About CBD But Were Afraid to Ask. I love and I was it. reading it, and it kind of primed my brain when I was reading other stuff. Because then I found this article, which we were, um, our institute was interviewed for, and we participated as a resource for, but it was one entitled, 18-year-old gets arrested for illegal possession of marijuana, tries to cry foul by asserting the package is a legal CBD product. This is by Ivan Green, published in the Cannabis Radar. So here's the issue, is... This guy, and he could have been misquoted by the press, mm. but this is what he says. And every, pretty much everything he says is wrong. Um, but we'll just go through it real quick. This is his quote. Uh, it's two, two sentences. But CBD flour can either be vaped, smoked, or used in making products like tea bags or jams. Her Herman Barkley, the co-owner of Indie CBD Plus in Indianapolis, pointed out, different delivery methods give different results. Vaping or smoking the products gets into the lungs faster than anything else, and there's zero waste. He added that CBD is used to deal with stress, anxiety, pain, and insomnia. What does CBD do? It goes after CB2 receptors in your body. Um, and I have to say uh, that, you know, also said that due to the low amount of THC, the consumer doesn't get a high. So just to break this down immediately, hmm. CB2 receptors, these are the type, you know, the other cannabinoid receptor they're found in your body, like, uh, you know, they help control inflammation. They're not like in the brain, they're not getting you high, but that's not, no, THC does that. Right. THC hmm. stimulates CB2 receptors. <clears throat> CBD has nothing hmm. to do with that. So um, these people are misrepresenting Right. And, and, who, and who is, I'm sorry, it's just a, some author, company, a, comp, a person. So the, the journalist interviewed a guy from a company yeah. and said all these things that basically like he, he found a chart and he erased THC and he wrote CBD in there. Mm. And, and, you know, when people talk about stimulating the endocannabinoid system directly, no, that's, it's THC. That's not CBD. CBD. I have a question. Another for you. fraud. I, I have a question though. What are they going to do about that? Are you going to write a letter and respond? I'm doing it right now. Yeah. <laughs> Calling them out in the public. The front. So what is he? he and owns what's the CBD he, flower? And, I mean, and, since when is yeah, there? A, yeah. or am I, well, you could have you could have a CBD rich flower. No, a CBD but the, rich but flower. You could have I mean, that. Yeah, but I mean, you grow but one exactly. CBD yeah, flower, which threw me off. But, I mean, but I understand. But, he, but rich flower. I think the misleading thing is in the word of the day, hot box, right? 
is that when you vape or smoke, there's zero waste. And I couldn't hear of a more misleading statement about you inhaling cannabis. I'm like, that's yeah. So it, it's just it, it seems everything seems to be wrong with the sense. <laughs> so and I would even argue why, that. So that, why are they competing at this point? I think that and there's a it's... there's a perception there's this old dogma this this bias where people say well CBD is medicinal THC right. is not right people like to throw out those things or CBD doesn't well, doesn't it's a stigma. Affect, I, I'm yeah. not I I, I was not crazy? aware of that oh argument. yeah really people well that's why it's easier to have CBD oils mm -hmm. and stuff like that right than well, well, right that there's have. a lot of frauds going yeah. on with this uh, oh, whole yeah. CBD so oil I think of thing. like like yeah. CBD is not really a cannabinoid like THC because it doesn't stimulate appetite you know if we were to like use an analogy CBD would be like the Pluto of cannabinoids this is a dwarf planet <laughs> <laughs> why are we always attacking Pluto <laughs> <laughs> I grew up Pluto was a planet uh, <laughs> but I, I, you know so right? I miss Pluto it's a moon now. <laughs> it's a moon. It's like oh, a well, little, it's like, sorry. But, yeah, we get yeah, off topic. It's okay. But THC uh, does that. Yeah. So whenever this is my new thing is when I read a lot of stuff about CBD, I'm just like, no, THC does that. You, yeah. You know. And so you see a lot of these charts where people talk about CBD, and there are some things it does, but they like to. People think that CBD is THC without the side effects, and it's right. that's really misleading. It's its own. It's its own jam. It's its own thing. Yeah. You know, people need to actually try both <laughs> to get an understanding between the difference between the, the, the two of them, because yep. there's an obvious and clear difference, difference. between and, CBD. Of course. And, and also, CBD. you have to realize when you get in newsletters and somebody's trying to sell a product, they're going to, you know, they'll, yeah, they'll say they're going to lean, they're going to give yeah. a marketing angle on what they're trying to push. There's and so that's got yeah. nothing to do with the real uh, right knowledge of, and so usually with a guy like this company it's someone i'd reach out to and be like who are your consultants who are you talking yeah, to yeah, who's giving yeah, you this advice because yeah. like we hear sarah palin like you know, you're, I know oh, the election boy, was years ago one. right she's like the fossil record doesn't exist it's like well she has some science advisor who told her that like oh, she's right. not coming up with these facts mm -hmm. on her own That's, and who's his advisor right right right, right. Yeah. jackass so, yeah. so we gotta we gotta it's staring we gotta, at russia <laughs> Right out of my bedroom window. Because there was probably some physicists be like, look through these binoculars. You can right. see it. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, friggin' Sarah. Russia. All right. But she had pretty hair. Just yeah. kidding. She kept it so, tight. Okay. <laughs> Anywho. Yeah, All right. Hair. Well. Well, that's that's the, that's the new segment. I've all, as I as every every week I'm looking at this stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna find some more examples because I think it's it's important to slowly disentangle this because I feel like consumers, business people alike, need to know, need to be able to navigate this. And and there are great things that CBD can do, and there's great things that THC can do. And we mm. don't. Can need I ask to you a question? It. How many hours a week do you spend on cannabis? Like, like thinking like, about it, oh, reading oh, oh. about <laughs> it. No. <laughs> I was like, I was like, that's a little oh, personal. Right. <laughs> you gonna yeah. get me fired? <laughs> I just, just for the record, I've passed every drug test I've taken. Mm -hmm. Usually get a C minus. <laughs> <laughs> My high school <laughs> average. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all against mad. <laughs> 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 um, so. Oh God. <laughs> Hours, hours of research go into uh, this show, but I try to. I, I got to say that um, there is no shortage of things to read about the right. study. Mm. Right. It's a rabbit hole. Like I find that the more I read articles, the less I'm interested in what the person's saying than the sources they cite. That's how I found that study about you know getting people in a room watching erotic films. Is like where is what is he basing this off of? And they were citing all this stuff I'd never heard of, and I was like, this is crazy that. There's there's government funding available for this type of work. Right. Um, yeah. So if you guys are ready, yeah. uh, we're gonna try a new format to something to, uh -oh. to our uh -oh. fake news. I'm just gonna read them one by one. What's yes. fake? Yeah. So I I, I, did, I tried to break them up into fake kind of news stories and then science. So I want to do the news ones first. All right. And then you know we'll see see what hits, see what doesn't. If you guys are ready. Okay. okay, sounds good. All right, so and we don't know how many are going to be real and how many are going to be fake. No, no. Oh. So we don't have numbers whoa, now. Whoa, whoa. So there's more so than this one is fake real. one in there. Yeah, could be. Maybe. Could be. Oh, could be. What? Depends on how funny so, we are. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> I have about uh, about seven or eight oh news stories. <laughs> oh, so first one is 
cannabis industry questions new system that would add chemicals to marijuana for tracking purposes. I know the answer. I know the answer. Is this a true story or is did I make this up last night scrambling for the show notes? Gosh, I almost want to say it's a true story because the government is stupid enough to do something like that. Let's put a chemical on it to track it. Uh, (laughs) No. Yeah. Sounds that wicked. Is it yeah. just scary enough to be true? Yeah, yeah. 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 It's yeah. scary like, enough to be it true. It is true. The <laughs> Institute Boom. for Cannabis yeah, Research at Boom. CSU, Colorado State University, is going ahead with research despite industry and legislature's rejection. It's causing a bit of a stink that they're going ahead with this private wow. company research. And it's 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 a little crazy. It's like, okay, so you're going to add this chemical that people are going to be inhaling yeah. to, to track it. Nuts? Don't say none wow. when they turn into zombies. Right, <laughs> hey. right. Might be the plot. What? <laughs> oh, that's gonna be a good. One. It's like a video game. You could write something about that. Yep. You know, All right. Seriously. Like to see. Go. Okay. All right. Good stone, job, guys. Good job. Zombies. Okay. So mm. the next next headline like is, uh-huh. series is from uh-huh. Europe. After decades on the market, Transylvania Castle is sold to hemp entrepreneur. Um, that's true. 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 So is this historic site going to become one of the largest hemp cultivation and processing facilities in Eastern Europe? Probably. I no. Hope not. no. Oh. I made that up. Oh. Oh. That was a good one. <laughs> I'm going to write that story. Damn, you the had second all part of it. Jackie, look at high, baby. So, but it is, it is, it is <laughs> true. Like to get smoke. That's how he hypnotizes people. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to we gonna hot box it. <laughs> I love it. But I Transylvania love it. Castle is on the market okay. and it is okay. for sale, okay. but no one's bought it yet. Okay. All right. But uh, business plan now. We got to do this. <laughs> yes, I like it. That's awesome. That's so fucking hilarious. So you can donate <laughs> on our webpage. Okay. All right. Um, next one the International Narcotics Control Board uh, from, you know, the, the, from the, the Inc. Uh, um, reports that uh, certain medical cannabis programs violate international drug control treaties. That's bullshit. That's, there are no international drug control oh, treaties, are there? Actually, there are. Yeah. Are there? Yep. Hmm. yep. Do you, so I with all that's it. going on I at the WHO. Because I've I, never I, heard of INCB. Yeah. Uh, well, so the International Narcotics Control Board actually did issue a report said, that said too. that there are a lot of cannabis programs that deal with accessing and buying cannabis that are violating international control, uh, drug control treaties. They don't have any power to really enforce it. But the WHO has put and off the making their thing? decision. This is a part of the United Nations. Nations. Yeah. Uh-huh. So they're they're looking at the 1972 treaty, something that. Uh, oh my but, god. Okay, what I mean, it was based <laughs> off another drug when it yeah. was when yeah. that it's was real. So I mean, I might have been. What are they talking about? Drugs Poppies all across the board, or, or are they talking about a specific? They're a talking specific about drug, these or? programs that license <laughs> businesses to produce cannabis and. Many of them violate this treaty Existing that all the countries rules. signed on to. So, like Canada and U.S. are probably in flagrant violation of these treaties that they helped create to control <laughs> drugs mm. from crossing borders originally. Yeah. Yep. Uh, well, okay. Is all it right. because of the exporting and importing in other countries? That is part of it. That is part definitely of it? part yeah. of it. Wow. wow. Um, so, all right. Mm. So our next headline: um, African Americans missing out on Southern push for legal pot. True. Wait, is there a southern push? Are you, wait, Mm-mm. what? No. Uh-uh. Is this a true headline? No. There's we no, have one. We have there, two. No, <laughs> nah. there's no legal push no. in the south. There's a because if I'm correct, I read something recently about these dudes down south who got like their 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 uh license. Yeah, their cannabis uh license and and uh, system is about to be up and running. So, really? In what state? I, I can't remember. So like Alabama, so maybe, or somewhere. No, is, is, it, is it a true no, headline? Or yeah. <laughs> I'm from so, Alabama. I can say it. So J true? Uh, no, it's no. not true. False G. I say it's uh no, Wait. that's false. false They're not being pushed out. It is true. Damn. So exactly. what what happened <laughs> is is uh there's actually two African American cannabis mm-hmm. businesswomen were handing out free joints on the steps uh, in Washington D.C. Yeah. to kind of talk about this because they're passing laws in Mississippi which were largely pushed by African-American business people. Mississippi, mm. you know, it's like very, very high rate African-Americans there since almost like 40%. Yeah. So they say it's the highest yeah. in the nation according to this article, but they're getting kind of left out despite being right. key for creating the program and mm. advocating for it. Um, Greer, right, you now I, guess I, can't. I thought I you said to... you had a C minus. And... Social stuff. So I guess oh, I need to change my joke about Mississippi then. 
Well, we not yet. Be, well, I'm it's from Alabama. <laughs> God damn it, sweet. We used to always it's great. Oh, I love it. Ah! <laughs> All right. All right. But I did, okay. but I did talk to that group from one. Arkansas, and that's why I knew the answer. Yep. And Arkansas is one of the states. Uh, but they're states. more progressive. They are. Yeah, and they and this, are. This, we more. were approached by a group who's interested in starting a large grow down there. So yeah, that's, how. that's wonderful. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and I did really some work wonderful. in uh, Louisiana mm -hmm. with Sue Sicily. We were working with trying to get this company off the ground in, in at Southern State University want to do a large grow and do these vocational job trainings yep. for the hemp and cannabis industry but it it just all yeah went to went to hemp I guess yeah. but yeah. Yeah. all right so so next Sorry. headline uh, uh -oh. I really Sorry. like this one creator of jelly belly releases CBD infused jelly beans this is, did I did I make this up last night while eating candy? Did, <laughs> yes you false. did I'm false yeah false. I'm false I'm gonna say that it's the truth it is a true story. Right. The, I'm the they're one too who classic. They don't need to do that. No, they, they don't. Well, they do. I mean, they, come on. It's they have a multi-billion industry. Dude, That's the all they're in it for the is, the is the money. I have to say, this guy's and a little. Better, yeah, I'm sorry. What, I'm sorry. And what better company to, to eat? Like, you know, whoa, that company is known for its jelly beans. Hey, guys, I know some of y'all smoke and eat our jelly beans. How about this? We give you some jelly beans to get you high already. Yeah. Pow. Yeah, there you go. So you can have so a few of those. They're going to make the bag a of regular smart yeah. move. They know what they're doing. I think so too. And, and it's, you know, and, but he's kind of full of himself a little bit. He's like, oh, no one's done this before. I'm like, uh, I'm pretty, that's, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Dude, yeah. we've been making home jellies. And now you want to jump on the yeah. block because well, everybody Well, he's going to kill stuff. it with the they're flavor kill, profile. Right? And their distribution yeah. Yeah. is everywhere. And they got the flavors. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's like Nike. Right. And I think this is a good idea. Like we have fentanyl lollipops and stuff. People who can't swallow mm. things like that and mm. have trouble with that. Like this, they is, a, have this fentanyl is a good lollipop. Yeah. 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 Like for pain. Not, not available at Walgreens. No, I but, know okay. that. I yeah. mean, not that I want yeah. any, but um, yeah, like, yeah, that's, really that's in the clinic. Because why, why? Like, so, so like if you have chemotherapy or cancer mm -hmm. pain, your throat will swell oh, up, be very painful. Oh, oh, yeah. And so, okay. you know, you can just, instead of swallowing a pill, you which can, could be impossible. Yeah. Right. So we have all these products. So when people talk about cannabis and candies and stuff, I'm like, well, we already have them all for every opiate. Yeah. What's the big deal about having these alternative delivery systems? You know, they also have, speaking of, they have like, hem um, God, I almost said hemorrhoids. Um, they said, what are they called? Oh, shit. I can't remember. Hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids. <laughs> now, that's a product. <laughs> hemorrhoids. <laughs> Get <Thanks>. your ass high. <laughs> Oh, all right, so. all right. We need we need to uh, get a, actually uh, that, that is a real, real thing yeah. for no. pain. Yeah. Yeah. They, they listening to us right now and they jack and shit down. They about down. to make million off all their make us. Hey, go, yeah. Daddy. Yeah. Donuts. Look, need, I would yeah, love to that. say that we have a lot of people listening right now. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't chafe you. Non chafe. Hemp would it would it be like a powder you just no. sprinkle in there? No, like, no it's a, I thought it was a roll. Yeah, it's a roll. Or you can carry it in a discreet pack and just go <laughs> off to the bathroom. Can you imagine what the car is? you feel it? Ooh, my like? ass is high as hell. <laughs> Why are you slunching in your chairs? <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Oh, man. Man, we just miss each other. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Cool. Settle down. Right. Okay, next one. Next She's one. She's like the substitute I know. teacher. <laughs> I feel like I'm being chastised. Sorry, go ahead, Dr. J. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So next headline. We'll be good. <laughs> next next headline, true or false, massive CBD oil spill from semi leaves passengers and pedestrians stuck for hours. Th that's a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure city sanitation workers didn't work for hours with cat litter and stuff to clean it up? Wait, 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 wait. Come on. wait We're going to need some on. overtime on this Hold one. Hold on. we got to talk about hemproids again because I just got a thing from Amanda Mason or Masson. Sorry, Amanda. Uh, she said on Facebook Live, THC suppositories are a game changer for menstrual cramps. And I read about that bingo, this week. Bingo. About how these things actually bingo. can really improve. Yeah. And they actually it will not get you high. It won't pass through right. that, that layer. But yes, Well, how are. do you protect women from toxic shock syndrome? Well, that's all that is is a tampon plastic. that stays in that, there. But we don't know what that would actually. I mean, does it? I mean, no, just, it would. It, the, the, 
the thing that it would be, it would probably be like a, a gl I don't know what kind of medium they would use to do hmm. it, but it would automatically be absor yeah, absorbed yeah. by the vaginal walls. So that's walls. actually the person who has the patent on that is the license holder for the federal marijuana grow for THC suppositories, <laughs> Mamudo Soli. Actually, he owns the patent for it, and he's had actually trouble with people wanting to study it. Um, what the? F why wouldn't he want? No, people like aren't really. He hasn't gotten a lot of industry no interest. Uh, well, then what? volunteers, but companies oh, wanting to one. fund to sure. research to further develop Jay Han, it. we you like him and know him, and why? Well, I don't want to be a participant, but I think <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> do I have to do this? <laughs> I'm talking about It's not a vagina. Oh, God. <laughs> well, wait, wait, wait. This job gets worse all the time. <laughs> okay. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. <laughs> seriously, it's a good idea. No, it is. I think, I think you could use, apply the technology in other areas. <laughs> Y'all are, are nuts today. But you know what? Okay. They, do sell, they do sell suppositories yeah. for, like, you know, going up the mm -hmm. colon for pain relief I also, for people yeah, who yeah, can't mm. handle it. But also, I love that. Thank you, Amanda, for Thanks, sending Amanda. that. Thank you, Amanda. And you Wait, guys were absolutely right. The, the massive CBD oil spill was yeah. something I, I right, made up. Right. All right. <laughs> but I like the vision People of would it. have been out there with like jaws. Yeah, yeah, that's a hell of a scene. <laughs> they have, like, the dab rigs of life to yeah, get you out. out there with jaws. Just... I help clean it. <laughs> I help clean. I ain't working twenty five years. years. I do it for free. <laughs> oh my god. Damn. Oh my god. But you know it's gonna happen sooner what? or later. There's gonna be some like gasoline truck filled with oil that's gonna fall over and this is gonna look what's inside. Oh wow. my god, that was so funny. Okay. <laughs> I haven't worked for twenty five so... years. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Next headline. <laughs> True or false? Oh my God. Cannabis is a wash. California is a wash in cannabis cash. Some is being used to bribe public officials. Mm -hmm. Is it a true headline or is it false? I'm going to go with is false. True. I say true. True. Like they're being bribed with. Uh, because, would you say, false. repeat that? Would you, would you, would you saw it one more time? Sorry. California yeah. is a wash in mm -hmm. cannabis cash. Boom. Some is being used to bribe public officials. That's oh, true. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I don't know. I'm going to go false. This is a true story oh, from the Los Angeles Times. Oh, uh -huh. my God. See? Sheriff John Lopey was startled when the mysterious stranger offered him $1 million if he could keep his deputies away from certain yeah. illegal cannabis farms. Local. And he didn't take it. Uh-huh. Oh, well. well. Would you take it? Well, actually, <laughs> only only eight hundred thousand dollars of the cash was recovered. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but well, that's. I bet um, it happens but, all the time. So he called exactly. the FBI. They involved, you know, employees, and so they, they did a little bit of a sting operation. Yeah. But um, I don't it's understand. a bit of a sensationalized st story. I, but who I did it? It's not legal in the state. It of is, but uh, you pay somebody under, you know, the. To have well, it on the black market. Kind yeah. of reminds me of like Rodney Dangerfield's back to school when he's like in class and they're like, How do you build a building? He's like, Well, you need money to bribe this guy and money to <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Oh, Rodney Dangerfield. That was a good scene. Um <laughs> so uh um, what else? All right, two more news headlines. All right. All right. So um a new report says legalization of cannabis presents a long term risk to the alcohol industry. Oh yeah. Yes. Wait, wait, repeat that. <laughs> a new report states that legalization of cannabis presents a long term risk to yep. the alcohol true. industry. Yes, uh, true. Yes. That's why alcohol is getting happening. into this. Yes, the and U.S. president exactly. of International Wines and Spirits exactly. Record yeah. uh -huh. reported in the Spirits Business talked about, though not yet mainstream, cannabis adoption is certainly growing in states where it's legal and does pose so a risk to the what, beverage alcohol industry. So, what big alcohol people are invested <laughs> in cannabis now? I think the Corona people are whoever owns yeah. Corona is like the, those those umbrella companies. Yeah. But I think mm -hmm. they're interested in um, you know infused. infused but stuff. you know what? Me a beer. But oh, a Corona. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, uh, but that's were, free they... advertisement. Holla at exactly. us, Corona. Throw some cash oh, at us. You feel me? Huh? Well, I mean, Lagunitas <laughs> has, has supported cannabis right. efforts in California. <laughs> I... They've sponsored events yep. and things yeah. like that. So there are, I mean, cannabis and hops are closely closely related. Uh, THC, CBD, these compounds dissolve really so well we have, in alcohol. So <laughs> both big tobacco and alcohol. I think in big are, wine are, are yeah. noticing that their revenues are getting cut into, so they they're yep. looking for this market to be a revenue. Stream. And an ice cold Corona is delicious. 
But it's not necessary. An infused one. All right. Might be better. Be better. Look at this. We're giving away all these ideas. All right. Last last news headline. Right. Are yes. you guys ready? Last. I'm exhausted mentally. Ro the Royal Canadian Mounted Police are worried that Hells Angels and Mafia would take over medical cannabis business, internal report says. Mm, I'm going to go bullshit. They're all in their 70s. What? So Take over what? Get out the, of here. The Mounted Police are worried that Hells Angels and Mafia would take over medical cannabis businesses. We're going to turn all the I don't buy it. No. I'm, thinking, no. I'm too old for that. This was reported by the Toronto wow. Star wow. on the 8th of March. Are you that serious? They are worried that the, the Mafia, the Green Hand's going to come in and take over Word. the cannabis business. And so, I actually mm. found a Hells Angels building in my neighborhood. I couldn't believe in, that they in oh, the East Village. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I old, didn't know yeah. that they. That's were their there. old. That's their old. You guys said yes. We're down in um, East East Village. Yeah, on, like, yeah, on like Adam Third, Adam, like Fourth Adam, Street or yeah, something. Yeah, Third yeah, Street. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's, that's been, there been there for years. years. Yeah, I saw that when I was a little kid. Me too. Okay, mm -hmm. then it's news for me, and I'm just old. I'm late to the game on well, that one. <laughs> so those are some of the the most interesting stories I think uh, you know I found. Can you uh, imagine Jayhan like going through all these articles, like circling them, like this yeah. would be good. Oh, this would be yes. good. <laughs> well, yeah. They're gonna definitely think this is a lie. <laughs> He's playing with I, our brains. I, I know you guys, your brains might be a little tired. I also did it yes. for some science articles, but oh we can. Oh my god! Let's no, do it. Cool. Let's, let's do, do it. it. Oh, let's you want to try it? Let's do yes. It. All We've right. got a game show. I hate to give away yeah, all this. Yeah, this is brilliant. Yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, all right. So we're going to do well, if we the take-home version. If we can get Vice or, or Comedy hey, Alex, to go. do it. Isn't Trebek uh, retiring soon? We could get him on here. Uh -oh. <laughs> Isn't he suffering from a... Uh... Yeah. yeah. God bless him. Who? Yeah. Who? Who? Alex Trebek. Oh, yeah. That was actually oh, my yeah. uh, inspiration for, for putting a quiz show in here was <laughs> was uh, my love of Jeopardy. Oh. So. Yeah. Well, should That's we have been answering it? What is... No. No. Uh, no. No. We gotta. <laughs> we gotta find our own way of doing things. What yeah. is? Maybe. Yes. Maybe. Maybe another time. You get okay. two hundred cannabis points. For that. Um, yeah. All right. So. Um, we could win prizes. All right. So first. First science headline: Cannabis may reduce complications of Crohn's disease. Cannabis may reduce complications of Crohn's disease. Is this true? Is this true research? True. True. Oh, yes. Boy. Yes. It okay. is true. In an analysis of 43,000 patients with Crohn's disease in the USA, uh, 16, 615 of them were regarded as using cannabis users. Um, they were shown to have basically less intra abdominal abscesses, mm. um, as oh, well yeah. as other less complications, including the <laughs> colon surgery and things like right. that. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, the authors concluded, quote, cannabis use may mitigate several of the well-described complications of Crohn's disease among hospital inpatients. Now, Dr. J, yeah. uh, like, uh, are they smoking this? You know, that's a good question. So, like how are they getting this? Perhaps I hate to rewind the hemp pads, maybe. With the so this was or done at the hospital of uh, Cook County in Chicago, and I think they accidentally stumbled across this, where they found that these people who reported using cannabis. They're looking at other things. Mm, they're like, oh, Crohn's. of these well, forty-three thousand people, only only uh, six hundred fifteen were reported openly using cannabis during did, their treatment. But isn't so Crohn's a, a the belief is that Crohn's potentially could be a symptom of a dysregulated endocannabinoid system, that it could be one of the uh, reasons mm. that Crohn's develops. Yeah. So, so yeah. Is that interesting? Mm. Wait a minute. Did I just Wait. lose you? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's bad. I mean, that's the the. So you have the receptors right? in yeah. your gut, mm. and, and when they're when there's the, there yeah. it is. So when it's stimulated, generally, un, it's you have to be a little carefully talking about this, but it slows things in your gut mm. a little bit which mm, can't right. be helpful because if mm. you have Crohn's disease or IBS Dang or the last things are shooting through there <laughs> not getting digested <laughs> and right. that can be harmful that can be painful, painful. um Jeez. Yeah. so listen all right all right next next See, you learn you learn. you learn new stuff no I'm, stuff. I'm trying at, not to you know. curse uh, you oh. learn new stuff every Dope. day on this thing all right um so this is uh from Thailand um Thailand offers cam cannabis amnesty program for patients. Um, 
So cannabis amnesty program for patients in amnesty. Thailand. Not true. Amnesty. Mm, I'm gonna say I mean, not true as well. Punitive country. Yeah. You know, still beat people with bamboo sticks. Yeah, in public. In public. Uh -huh. Well, but they also yeah. <laughs> for spitting. I, I don't know. No, I, 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 isn't no, that I region wanna... of Asia? Aren't they really like yeah, strict the, on drugs? Yeah, they dude? are. They are. They're super man. strict on stuff. Yeah, man. They I'm don't saying play. yes. Yeah. I got. So we go got one yes, two no. I'm saying yes only because the medical. Tourism is huge so for them, it, and this could be a medical tourism oh, kind of minute, thing. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, that's right. So people get sick, they, we're sick. They go oh, there for the surgeries, right. which is Thailand? cheaper. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. So I'm does it agree. does it sound too good to be true? Yeah, it does no. sound too good I'm to be true, but I'm going to agree with Jan. I'm, I'm going to stick with, with my, no. Well, it's, it's not too good to be true. Uh, the so government has instituted for those who had mm -hmm. cannabis in their possession for medical use before legalization took effect will be able to petition the government to wow. keep it. Um, the nationals and foreigners are mm -hmm. eligible for the amnesty program and medical mm -hmm. cannabis possession. So so what does that mean form. if you get pulled over? You can keep your smoke. Yeah, if you so if you did it, if, <laughs> right? Well, if, yeah. you, if you but had you can it, if you didn't acquire <laughs> cannabis through the program, you don't have to throw away your medicine. So it's like. Imagine if oh. aspirin wasn't legal and you had all this aspirin and then you like you'd be like, mm -hmm. Where where'd you get it from? Did right. you buy it from Rite Aid? You know, you, yeah. you get to keep yeah. your medicine. Um okay. So uh this next headline <laughs> thirty milligrams of oral THC induce psychotic and violent effects in patients with a history of schizophrenia. Oh. Thirty milligrams of oral THC <laughs> induce psychotic and violent effects in patients with a history of schizophrenia. I'm going to say no. I'll say no. Jim? Yes. Yes? Does this story sound like I made it up late last night? Yes. Just because I did. It did. There's I no. Be honest, I There's so much pressure yeah. on, on the market if that is true. Yeah. Right? Like, like 30 million. I'm like, oh. I just was, no, I was I channeling can... Alex Berenson for um, a moment. Yeah, so that's yes. something I just completely made up. I was looking for like a negative story. I couldn't really find one that you was like hard of yeah, this is a little tricky. You find some, like, you know, uh, nuanced negative stuff. All right. Um, so this is a, a, a research report um, from Australia. And is this true that most patients buy their cannabis on the black market? Yes. In Australia. Mm -hmm. Yes. Most patients yes. buy their cannabis on the black market. Yes. I don't know if they've legalized it or not. Yeah. Um, I know it was expensive to get and hard to get when I was down there, and it was pretty shit weed. Yep, there is, a, there is a medical cannabis system. There is a medical cannabis program. Mm -hmm. I'll, I just, I just, I'm going to go, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it is It is, it is. true. Yeah. Uh, a ratio of 30 to 1, uh, people are still getting their cannabis and, and, products and on the black and market. Legal. Hold on, can we yeah. talk Just about this? Just because they're lazy and it's convenient, no. right? No, no, it's probably because no, they don't no. have enough dispensaries. It's, wait, hold on, uh, hold on, I want to talk about this. Because it is, it's a very multifaceted thing. So getting a card is a huge issue. And especially if you have major pain issues, major health issues, mm. it's another thing of getting a doctor to certify it. Not all doctors. Doctors will certify it. You have to have certain kind of requirements. Then there are supply issues, even if you're going through the medical program, that it's really, you know, that oftentimes I know here in the U.S. we have dispensaries that don't have consistent products because they can't produce it quick enough to, to fill it. So right. a lot of patients might do well with one variety, and then they go back and it's not available. So there are all of these mm. different factors that mm. are really um, deter, you know, deterrence for getting the care that you need. And also these programs are very expensive. It's not covered by insurance anyway. So why in the hell am I going to go through all these hoops when I can go down the street and get it from Joe? Yeah. And you know I mean, I'm I just mean? thinking the couple of people that I know that have cards still get it from Joe, even mm -hmm. though they sometimes go to the, I mean, they, I think they use dispensary products, but I think they still know Joe. Of right, course. right, right. We <clears throat> all, so yeah. Joe's yeah. always going to be in business. Joe so, is always good. And we talked about that, I think, finally... the last time, wasn't it, with Canada? And their market is still really thriving, the black mm -hmm. market mm -hmm. is. So, yeah. yeah, so the experts in Australia say that the significant barriers to legal access have produced a failed system, and they're yep. calling for oh. more independent regulations or, or to, you know, change the system. 
Oh. Well, you know, it, it's a huge issue because I know like for my patients, they're like, why am I spending so much money to try this and it might not work? Try this and it might not work. Try this and it might not work. Whereas as far what as, if I as just, medicines, you yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if they, well, uh -huh. no, I'm talking about oh, dispensaries oh, because you don't, okay. because it's you not personalized know, right, right now. Right and then. so there are all these Blue dreams things. Blue dream doesn't work. Yeah. Right, right, well, right. What right. Is it that and and right. usually the bud tenders, which I freaking hate that term, but they're usually <gasps> like, try this. They don't know shit. Remember you know, I they, said, yeah. I, said, yeah. I was they like, don't know how anything. dialed they're in. They're making oh, medical yeah. right. decisions, decisions mm -hmm. for and people, right. for mm -hmm. a vulnerable population. Yep. And yep. that yeah. is huge. People yeah. in their 20s can't even pick good music. Why would you trust Why them would for you medical advice? That's what I was saying about that little girl. And you know what's really disturbing is Oftentimes, these these um, products or businesses are actually trying to throw like marketing materials to get you to buy their product, That's and right. so it's becoming this very kind of market where we're we're really not paying attention to what's good for the patient. We're paying attention to what's the bottom line, yep. and and that just is so concerning. But anyway, I All digress. Right. But there's, and you know, one of the things I would like to talk to about eventually is the issue of reciprocity around these medical cannabis programs. Because mm -hmm. if I have a card in one state, I can't go to another That's state right. with medicine without yep. for that, fear of getting arrested. Yep. And, 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 only... and Joe has reciprocity, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Way to go, Joe. Yeah. In big fat bags. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. it is it is an issue of convenience because like you know on the east coast compared to like california or the west coast which is like three states if you're driving through 12 states and you like on one highway you're an illegal possessor of cannabis and the next highway it's legal yeah, yeah like, it's ridiculous it's a little bit like spinning the roulette wheel well, while you drive I mean, down the highway it's almost again to me it's a logical fallacy because it's kind of like assuming that it's really not medicine <laughs> then. Mm -hmm. if we're okay with not having it legal federal you know what i mean it's almost saying like look okay you have a card in new york you can't go to new jersey so really it's not medicine right and, mm -hmm. and that's where i think that there are all these bullshit kind of like reasons why regulators don't want to do it. it's bullshit but, you know you yeah. do what's right and you do you You're take right. care of the patients okay. and so anyway all right well we got a couple more of these science ones if you guys are still hungry yeah all right all right Next next one is uh, CBD helps prevent hearing loss and can treat ear infections. CBD mm. helps prevent hearing loss and can treat ear infections. Uh, I'm going false. with false. Yeah, I'm going to go with false too. Really? Is that obvious? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Am, I, am I hearing you, you guys correctly? Yeah. Have you been it's trying it. that CBD so, stuff again? So, <laughs> no, this is completely uh, made up. Uh, there's no real research supporting this at all. Yeah. And the reason yeah. I got it is I saw... <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I saw an advertisement from a company with some smiling like model dropping CBD into really? his ear, oh and I God. was like, "Is there is there a shred of evidence to support putting CBD in your ear?" Um, and then I couldn't really find any. Like, there's uh, a so giant poster of the CBD company on 42nd Street. It's got like dog shampoo and CBD dog shampoo. It's like it's I looked at that know. advertisement and I was so turned off. It, it had both dog products and human products. Uh huh. And I was just so turned off by it because it's like, you know what? Bullshit. Exploitation. It's, that's all it is. It's just, exploitation. It was just like, just like beat it. You know, I wouldn't, so if I had a dog, do... I wouldn't wash him with that shampoo. Well, actually, a friend of mine gave his dog one of those treats. Uh, and he was like, man, it seemed to make my dog more anxious. <laughs> <laughs> okay. there you go. He probably gave him the wrong strain. <laughs> right. <laughs> but he couldn't know. tell. What do you know? I was like, right. he's not a dog psychiatrist. How would they know? <laughs> Did I ever tell you the story about my poor dog, Bodie? Mm -mm. Uh oh. So I got a call. We had to take Bodie to the hospital, the doggy hospital. And we're like, what the hell happened? Did he eat something? Did he eat something? And while we're sitting there, it occurred to me I had had all of these cookies sitting on my dresser. He ate a whole plate what? of weed cookies. And so. Small dog? Yeah. Kind of medium sized dog. He was listening to Pink Floyd in the car on oh, the way home. Bodie and what I know, Bodie was like, I'm comfortably numb. Anyway, <laughs> and, <laughs> and so we were like, what the hell? What the hell? And it occurred to me what it was. And the minute that I was like, I know what it is, they all oh left God. me to handle the vet. That's after that. I bet you can't give him a milk bone no, anymore. He's I don't like, do anything. No, no. I want the cookies. I want the cookies. Mom. Yeah, where's the cookies, mom? Uh, at least little Ribby wasn't affected. <laughs> well, in, in the 70s, dogs were used for a lot of <laughs> cannabis <laughs> research. Really? Yeah, they, right. there's, um, there's actually the 
That's how they got Scooby Doo. Well, there was <laughs> one of the famous anti cannabis uh, people that the government hired. They hired this pharmacologist called James Munch. And he was actually so out of control, they actually had to tell him, like, hey, tone it down a little bit. Because he would, I'll get to his dog story in a second, but he would go on trial and, like, people would use cannabis. He'd, he'd say, oh, yeah, it made them insane. And they'd be like, well, how do you know? He's like, well, I tried marijuana once and I turned into a bat and flew around my office and landed in an inkwell. Actual court testimony where he's talking about what? this. Oh, God. And, oh, so, God. and so he talked about these studies, these horrible studies he did on dogs oh, where he'd like God. pour cannabis tinctures directly into their brain. And he told a, court, he told a courtroom that they it irreversibly changed their personality. And when the... The, def- the, um, <laughs> the public defender asked him, how did it change the dog's personality? He said, I don't know. I'm not a psychiatrist. Wow. So he was like Wait, all was over. The- he was James okay. Munch. He was the government's like foremost cannabis, anti-cannabis advisor. Oh. So he was around up until how the much 70s. Did, how, many, how much tax dollars did they pay this guy? Oof, oh, I don't know. Probably. That's a good yeah. question. But you give us chill holes in dogs' heads. Yeah. yeah. Let me pour yeah. this in your head. <laughs> how you <laughs> feel? How you feel? How you feel, Bucky? <laughs> yeah, sounds like. <laughs> but yeah, this is a crazy history of cannabis <laughs> advisors to the you government. You sound like cats. You don't even sound like that's, a that's, dog. That, that, that's why it changed the personality. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I'm a cat. <laughs> I'm a feline. <laughs> Changing Ooh. dog is the cats. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> We're nuts. <laughs> All right. All right. All let's right. do you guys want to do just two more? Go two ahead. More let's do it. Two more. All right. Then maybe we'll start to wrap. All right. Medical use of cannabis was associated with a lower probability of illegal drug use in the USA. The medical use of cannabis was associated with lower probability of illegal drug use in the US. True. Is this a real True. study yeah. that was published uh, recently? Hmm. True. Or is it a? Well, it's probably factual, but if it's a study, is, is the question right? Was it? A, is it a true? Is it a true headline? Is it a true? Yes. Yes. I'm gonna say it's not a true headline, but it's true. All right. This is a true story, according okay. to a study with 210 <laughs> medical cannabis patients and 156 non-patient <laughs> cannabis users, age 18 to 26. The medical use of cannabis was associated with a lower probability of illegal drug use, while the use of cannabis concentrates increased probability for illegal drug use. This was published in the Dad Journal, the mm-hmm. Drug and Alcohol Dependence Journal, um, by researchers Drunk in Drexel. And alcohol, what? Drug and alcohol dependence. Drug and alcohol, alcohol dependence. Dependence. Dad. 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 Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Damn it! <laughs> Hey, Dad. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> she wins. Oh, my God. Researchers have a, a oh, weird man. sense of humor when they wow. design Let's these things. Let's call it Dad. It's Dad's fault. I just, uh, yeah. like and, and, wow. it, it was Dad's it fault. Was. It was. Yeah, <laughs> Dad did it many times. Always. That's how I make my living. <laughs> yeah. And with and and with dad, you can learn all about suds, which are substance use disorders. <laughs> disorders. Yeah, so. Oh my God! Just Lord. Lord, Lord. All right, What's all the right, next one? all right. Uh, the presence of a legal dispensary for cannabis may reduce opioid-related mortality. The presence of a legal dispensary for cannabis may reduce opioid-related mortality. I will say yes, yeah. because you use the word "may." Mm, I don't know. I, need, I, need, um, I don't know. I think there's been cases that, right, where they're saying actual marijuana actually does uh, do that. But you're right. Uh, but um, it's not that, enough to prove that yet. I mean, just that that like, repeat that. Jay. So the presence of le- the presence of a legal dispensary oh. for cannabis may reduce illegal. Legal, illegal, legal, illegal. In presence oh. of a legal dispensary for That's cannabis I, nah. may reduce opioid-related <laughs> mortality. Uh, yes. I mean, logically it makes sense, but I don't yes. think there's enough legal dispensaries in like dope neighborhoods that the guys are like, nah, I don't want any more of this. <laughs> <laughs> that I is that is a good point. Years. That is a good point. <laughs> um, that, that was my mind. So, oh. th- so uh, researchers used data from the Center for Disease Controls to analyze the association between medical lo- cannabis laws in the U.S. and opioid-related deaths. While it is true that there is little evidence that simply the enactment of a medical cannabis law reduces opioid-related deaths, they found that the presence of a legal dispensary 
may uh, help to reduce opioid-related deaths, published by uh, researchers from Lafayette College in Pennsylvania. But you make a good point. Where is the dispensary located? What is yeah, the magnitude right, of the right. impact? Exactly. Right. But, but the issue is it goes back to, and this is why Jayhan and I, we've had some interesting interactions about this issue, is that people don't understand these uh, impacts that actually keep barriers to access, like we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. keep people from using this drug. Mm -hmm. So so if I'm addicted to opioids, why in the hell am I going to jump through all these hoops exactly. when I can just get it, you know, from... from well, there's 1,600 you know, right. cities and counties, I think, in total that are suing uh, Purdue Pharmaceutical right now. Because of that. Because of the opioid crisis. They were, they were flooding these areas with yeah. these pills, yeah. you know, and, and they should go down. That's your drug uh, dealer right there. Absolutely. It's not and the then, dude on the corner. And it's, then they came up with a program, another they're making drug hundreds of millions to of dollars. treat that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is just <clears throat> And then here's the another kid. drug, that, which we see those damn clinics. And yeah. just, oh, yeah. my God. God. I mean, it's horrible. And then I this mean, woman who just retired from the DEA, I forgot her name. She just uh, is it Michelle Leinhardt or, uh, or this? Uh, she was with the DEA for like thirty years, oh, I don't know. and uh, now she's working for like um, uh, a Purdue Pharmaceutical. Hmm. So as uh, she was uh, working to, mm -hmm. to 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 prevent them from like now she's on their side of the fence. Yeah. That, what what, what did I say to you movies. about the Benny Prem Center last? We went to go get haircuts. Uh -huh. and those, remember I said how disgusting it yeah. is in the morning. Uh -huh. Because, because when they it, go get their treatment mm -hmm. and they yep. go outside and they're sick, <laughs> yeah. yep. you know, and uh, that's a treatment center around the corner from where I live. Oh, my. Yeah. Um, yeah. Former DEA official yes, now working her. for Oxycontin yes. maker Purdue Pharma. That's uh, her. Demetra wow. Ashley is, yes. is a paid consultant to Purdue Pharma now being sued for allegedly misrepresenting the risks of long-term use of opioid painkillers. Boom. Thank you, Dr. I J. I hope they are suing her. She looks like she's, she's in trouble. Well, it's just it's it's it, you it's know the, sad. that's the bottom line is is that it, that's 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 scummy. Well, yeah, like you, not... I get it, you're in it for the money, but that's fucked up. You shouldn't be allowed. They want to pass a law where you can't do that. Right. Where you can't be on this side of the fence, and then all of a sudden, after you lose, you know, you you leave you're to do your tenure or whatever, you get to go on the other side, side. and start, like, you know, writing up and putting mm -hmm. up bullshit you know, so that they that, can sell their poison to the youth minutes, of America. There was a 60-minute special, I think, about a year and a half ago about this issue. And they actually, this is the pattern that they've been doing, is hiring mm -hmm. people who work for the DEA mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as people to come work for them. So they know all of these loopholes. Mm -hmm. They know mm -hmm. what, what to do. And then when work somebody's to throwing out. you $800,000, yeah. you know, right. you know right. like, like, They should I make get it, it illegal. I cool. agree. Totally agree with you on that one. Well, also wow. someone has to negotiate because I'm sure, you know, the DEA wanted certain information from them. So there were also agreements made about what data would be released to the public and what would be private, including how much they're making, where it's being distributed mm. and, and the rates of use and prescriptions. Like a lot of that information is still protected despite these lawsuits going on and that's right. so you see, you do see these deals going on between mm. pharma mm. companies and government so that they'll cooperate a little bit more. That's just a shame. We've got that, to make sure. That's why they, they're probably the, part of they're, they're on they're in the fight against legalization of marijuana. I, mean, I have to tell you, I, I, think, I think that we really need to make sure, and I hope that we can here to make sure that we keep this cannabis industry focused. Absolutely, not just yeah. on money, but on not people. on money yeah. and not on like recreational. Yeah, not to, it's good for it does shit. It works yeah. for a lot well, of people. We just know? need to keep people first. Yeah. You yeah. know, instead and of And not profits. big farm. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't profit. want. I don't want to give you my money. I've well, I think that, that I don't want your that's product. also uh, the fact that we're a group of people who actually have stake in what's yeah. what's forming. Yeah. It's, yeah. We're it's also um, doctors and patients within ourselves because of our, we've done the research. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've done I've done the research and I and I have smoked marijuana where it's like yo I don't want to smoke this particular one anymore because. It gets it me racy or whatever. Yep. yep you know, yep, yep. and then like, please, these schmucks. But what I was getting at is sorry, folks, Randy, folks that have I mean, earned Randy. earned a level of to help shape the industry that's right. emerging. Mm -hmm. Right. It's important that we realize our voices have to be there. We have mm -hmm. to partner with folks Absolutely. that put us at a platform. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That Absolutely. you know, as this thing gets shaped, because we can't wish 
for other folks mm-hmm. to shape Absolutely. it when we, we have finally to. have the strength to and, do so. And Jayhan and I have had this conversation at length that we've decided really just to partner with people who we felt like shared a similar vision. Okay. And I'm not yes. here to tell people that they can't make money, but at yes. the same time, there is an opportunity here for us to shape things in a Bingo. different way. Yep. And yep. and that to me is very powerful. I yep. love what you guys are going to be doing because you're you're really making an impact in your community. You know, Jay Han and I we we have some things um, going on that well, we're trying to do the same. I'm a, yeah. I'm an advocate born scientist, so I got yep. into the advocacy, and that was the curiosity. You know, I got started on this like a lot of people did. I was someone's yeah. like mm-hmm. talked to a patient and and uh, I met him at a at a party. Yep. and. She held up this jar that had testing limits on it. And this was like in 2002, 2003. And mm-hmm. I was like, what do you mean there are other cannabinoids? Oh, all people know is THC just gets you high, increases your heart rate. Mm-hmm. She's like, no, there's a lot more to it. Went to the internet. Yep. And I will, could I was hooked. I was hooked yep. on the research. I mm-hmm. couldn't get us. enough of it. That was mm-hmm. me too. Awesome. Yeah. And, you know, and, and like we all, you all got to start somewhere. That's but right. I think um, the research just kind of became, it, that became my biggest problem. I was late to work. So I'm like, sorry, I'm printing out studies. <laughs> I, I got to <laughs> walk around this big old backpack of paper. He's like, still doing <laughs> that. Just so you know. yeah. He's always That's a little bad. late. But, <laughs> but he comes with a wealth of information. Yes. 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 Well, Brilliant. speaking, Full speaking of uh, like listening to the people, um, one of the things, and we could also talk about reciprocity, but USDA took comments from people on March 13th. Um, on what people had to say, so our guidance through rulemaking. They're actually going to do this through their specialty crops program. And you can still submit comments, uh, farmbill.hemp at usda.gov. Yeah. But uh, I listened to a lot of it. It's, it's a video you can watch live on the internet. I'll put it in the show notes. But just like one little factoid I pulled out. Um, in Wisconsin, they have seen a huge jump in the licenses from people from like the one year to the next. First year they had the program, yeah. 245 applications. Next year, 1,400 applications for licenses. They are worried they're not even gonna be able to inspect all these licensed places. And everything's from one acre to 240 acres or mm. the size of these persons. Not everyone's going for like huge farms. Some people are like one acre, two acres, sure. five acres for hemp. But there were some interesting things brought up. like. This is a re- the, probably the most interesting talking point that came out of this because they're not responding to questions at USDA. They're just taking in mm-hmm. all mm-hmm. these questions. And one that was repeated more than once is what do you do with hemp that is above the 0.3% cutoff, right? If it's 0.3% yep. to or under, why destroy it, right? That's the, that's the rule. That's like the, 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 goal, like the standard now. So 0.3%, got to destroy it. <laughs> right. But other people actually do true industrial use of hemp could use it to make t-shirts they could course, use it yeah. to make I'm, whatever I mean, who, why what would they destroy do. i mean i'd never heard they're destroying it once it excels the mm-hmm. uh that limit when they are there's a huge fiber mm-hmm. uh Right. And so they're wanting to get some guidance from federal authorities to be like, can you, you know, weigh in on this and advise us what to do? Why must it be destroyed? Why, you know, it's, it's again, it's a patchwork of regulations. Some people, are, some places allow you to remediate it, well, process it. it. Is. Some that's places are like, no, you got to burn it or, well, no, you can't burn it, but you have to destroy it. Right, right. Um, yeah. But they're they're trying to get this done by 2020. But um, it's 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 pretty interesting. The transcript is all public information. They had a lot of senators weighing in from different counties and individuals and mm. stuff like that. And it's great. It's lovely. It's lovely to see the government not be able to operate a webinar. They're right. constantly like, <laughs> "Hello, are you there?" Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. One guy they had to tell him literally, "Can you download an updated version and then log back in?" Uh-uh. <laughs> I was like, "Wow." Really? Yeah. That's government efficiency. It was wow. it was pretty oh, funny. It was like if you, it was like the first thirty minutes was like none of the people that were in line to speak could you could hear them, or like there was like echoes and stuff. But eventually they got they got a roll going and it was smooth. But it was it made me feel really good about. I think we need <laughs> like, to do an episode with Alec Berenson's talk on C-SPAN. Well, that we just cool. had our article published on yeah. Project CBD yeah, in response right. to oh, him. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But writing he, according to Jehan, but we should because it's really kind of comical. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I think uh, time, we might need to call time here. What do yeah. you think? Well, time flew today. Well, well, let's, good. Are there any uh, last hits you guys want to wanna take I on do. any subjects? Uh, <laughs> we'll pass it around one time. <laughs> this is your, what, what, do we, what do we pass call this will. segment? I will. We'll, call the, seg- we'll call this segment <laughs> Patreon. We need support from all of our listeners. So we have 
we are supported by you guys, not industry. Um, we're doing this out of the kindness of our hearts right now. And if you want to go to patreon.com slash new hemp times, you can join and support this podcast. And the, we have different levels of support you can do something from a dollar on up and different little goodies that come along with it. So please don't food. forget to support us. You know, you can send us food. <laughs> we need food, Munchies. clothing. Cause we're hungry. <laughs> Because <laughs> we haven't worked I think in a refrigerator years. with like <laughs> beverages would yeah. look really good right here. Yeah. Or we can have cocktails along. Hey. And if you want Corona, to you hear us? <laughs> Isaac. <laughs> but seriously, guys, we yeah. need uh, patreon.com. And definitely, if you're in New York, schedule to go see Greer Barnes at oh, Comedy yeah. Cellar. Yeah. He's really great. Yeah. Or Vegas next month. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's nice. a fun trip. Oh my God. Yeah. Are we gonna have what's, you call? What's your, what, what's your? What's uh, your? Let's clear the bowl here. What's what's going on? What do you want to talk about before we go? Um, nothing. I had a little idea about. Uh, I had an idea. I'm just gonna give you an idea of what it is. Um, it's called Little Greer. Uh, I'm a Fortune 500 company dude. Brilliant. I never lose. I win at everything. I'm cocky and brash. I think my sister and my cousin both work for me, and I have a huge attitude, big attitude, and I have a right to be. Like, I never failed at anything. Great athlete. I'm just brilliant. I'm like what Donald Trump wishes he was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, I don't know. They, long story short, they try to cast a spell on me to take my ego down, and they screw up the spell, and they wind up shrinking me in height. Oh, no fucking way. So I live in a Barbie doll house. <laughs> I rig one of Barbie doll, one of Barbie's cars to drive around the house. No, I'm you don't. Riding on the back of a cat with a He-Man outfit on. That's not, that could, that's, that could look good for the summer. You, you gotta smoke weed and watch summer. it. <laughs> <laughs> You're not right. You're not right. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm waiting for your children's book to come oh out. Oh my god, about the bees. About the, the incredible bees. shrinking business. No, <laughs> the bees. What's that, Papa? Actually, Grayson and I did that in the car the other day. Really? <laughs> Sorry. Right. A little creepy. Randy, what's what do you want to touch on before we go? Any So uh <laughs> mm. message to the listeners. He's message to the listeners. Keep on listening, educate yourself. Yeah. Tune into uh treat each other well. Treat each other well. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Nice. and, and we'll, be safe out there, yeah. y'all. Absolutely. We'll recreate this place the right, right way. Yes. All right. Send your questions and comments to our social media pages. We will answer your questions on the air. Thank you so much for the people who participated and chimed in. Uh this is the New Hemp Times signing off for March twentieth. Nice. Adios. Adios. <laughs>